Today, I'm looking at using a third-party power meter to control the power readings from a Wahoo kicker. Last week over on dcrunmaker.com comment section, I spotted a question by Luke D. Luke asked, if you're using a third-party power meter on your bike as your power source whilst using a smart trainer, how important is it that your smart trainer is accurate and spun down, and do you need to worry about calibration of your smart trainer? Very, very good question. Today, I've run three tests to answer that question. Let's look into it. The setup and summary of the three tests that I ran today, test number one was baseline. I used the PowerTap P1 pedals. They were just there for the ride, but I used the Kicker 17 as the power source and the controllable trainer on Zwift, and I recorded the data with the head units here. So test number one was baseline. In test number two, everything remained the same, except I miscalibrated the Kicker. I had it reading way, way too high, and then ran the same tests. And the third test was to configure the Kicker to read the power from the PowerTap P1 pedals and answer Luke's question. Let's now dive over to DC Ramaker's analysis tool and have a look at the data recorded from those three tests. Test number one, the baseline. PowerTap P1 pedals, just there passively monitoring what's going on with the Kicker 17 as a power source and smart trader control. Digging along there at 200 watts, give or take a few watts. Happy days at 200. Similar happy days at 250 and into some 20 second over and unders. The only thing I can really pick out from there with the power type P1 pedals up against the kicker is probably around the 450 watt mark. Things get a bit ugly for those 20 seconds, but that's all looking pretty good. Over to test number two, where everything remained the same, except I misconfigured the kicker to read way, way higher than what it really was doing. So the source of truth here are the power type P1 pedals, and the kicker was in crazy land. This replicated a kicker that hadn't been spun down or a smart trainer that hadn't been configured or calibrated or spun. It's just a wildly inaccurate smart trainer power source with a more accurate actual power source here. So what we're seeing is Zwift still thinks the kicker is the source of truth. It's not. So we're seeing 200 watts here reported to Zwift and the head unit from the kicker, whereas in fact, I was only doing 115 watts. And then up to 250, I was only doing 160 watts. And the over and unders there, you can see they're well out as well. Everything tracks perfectly, but it's inaccurate. The kicker was purposely, on purpose, misconfigured to read well high. That gives us two baselines to go to the next test. Prior to test number three, I loaded up the Wahoo Fitness app on the iPhone, connected to the kicker configuration, selected control with an amp plus power meter. I entered the amp plus ID of the power tap P1 pedals, 59249. Hit save on that. After that, I jumped back over to Zwift to make sure I was still paired to the kicker as the power source and the controllable trainer. Remembering it hadn't been spun down again, so it was wildly inaccurate itself, but the kicker is now configured to read the power tap P1 data out of the air and then report that as its source of truth. Let's have a look at the data now. After what appeared to be an initial shake of the head there for a few seconds, it tracked beautifully, as you'd expect. It's pretty much the same power source. One's just relaying through the kicker. It's not one for one, but it's pretty damn close. So 200 watts, 250 watts, and then overs and unders, and exactly what we're seeing with test number one, the 450 watt range gets a bit messy. So if I just flip back between test number one and test number two, test number one, test number two, all looks pretty good. So to answer Luke's question, in this instance, no, it doesn't really matter if your smart trainer is wildly inaccurate. If you've got a source of truth, another power meter, paired to that smart trainer, it's happy days. You will still have to ensure though that you do a zero offset or a calibration of your power source to make sure it's reading correctly. Um, this may only take a few seconds though, rather than the 10 minute warm up and 30 seconds or so to do a spin down on a smart trainer. So. Time saved. Response time in erg mode as well, changing erg mode from 150 watts to 300, 150 to 400, no difference whatsoever in both the modes that I was in there. So there's no lag whatsoever that I encountered. Happy days. A side note on this, this is effectively power matching, just done a different way directly via the kicker. We'll leave it there for today. Thanks to Luke for posting the question and uh, giving me a good workout to look into this. And now I'm off to recalibrate that kicker again to get it back into line. Those readings were wild. Okay, thanks for watching.